uh, uh, they are preaching these next two weeks, and so Josh is preaching this week, Ethan is preaching next week, amen? So you do not want to miss. So actually, I'm going to invite uh, Josh up to the, to the stage. He's going to be uh, sharing his heart with you, he's sharing his, his message that he has created. Um, actually, he was over at our house this week sharing with me, and I am so excited. I am so excited. Like, this is going to be so good, y'all. All right? So good. All right? And so uh, I really believe this is an anointed message from the heart of God to everybody here. So please attend. I cannot believe he's, and I'm thinking, I didn't, I don't even know when I started preaching. I think it was like 21, 22, and he's already 20. And I'm thinking, what God is going to do? in this young man's life, that when God, when you give God your life, God turns your life around and makes miracles. Amen? Amen. So please listen to, to Josh as he comes. I really believe this is God's message to y'all. Amen? Amen. Amen. Testing, testing. Let me see. Is that good out there? Perfect. Cool. How's everybody doing today? So, as you said, my name is Josh. If you don't know me, I think I know Actually, I think I know everybody in here. Um, <laughs> if you're watching online and don't, don't know me, I'm Josh. I'm usually doing audio or running around or doing something. Um, today, I'm going to be preaching on God's love for us. Um, for me, that's something that I've actually struggled with growing up in the church is actually knowing that God was for me, that he loved me, that he cared for me. You see, as believers, it's one of the most essential things that we understand that Christ actually loves us, that God loves us, he's for us and not against us. When we understand God's love for us, it allows us to walk out his calling on our lives. It should be the foundation of our calling, the foundation of our relationship with God and other people, and it should be the foundation of our calling. In my life, I grew up in church, kind of knew what to do, knew what to say, but never actually developed my relationship with God for myself. And when rubber hit the road, I ended up making a lot of mistakes because I didn't have a firm foundation to stand on. And I struggled a lot with shame and condemnation and guilt over things that were out of my control and some things that were. And I started to hang out with the wrong people, started doing things that I knew were wrong. Out of a misunderstanding of who God was, I thought that God was mad at me, that he didn't love me, and so I didn't act loved, nor did I act how he called me to act. And so I started struggling with drugs and alcohol. Um, No longer struggle with that. God set me free in 2022. Um, (laughs) But I started struggling with that, especially when I got into high school, and just running from God, knowing that he existed, but I was mad at God because I thought he was mad at me. And I remember it so clearly, everything shut down with COVID. (laughs) There was nothing. Um... And I ended up going to a church service right when they started opening up all the services and everything a little bit. And I remember that was when I encountered God clearly and had just enough understanding to know that he died for me, that I got saved. I didn't know what to do. My call to God was, God, if you're real, which I know you are, I've seen you do too much in my life for to know that you're not real. God, I need you to change me because what I'm doing is not working. I can't do this anymore. God, please, I need you. And so I started to walk with God, out of, still out of a misunderstanding of his love, thinking that if I can work hard enough, thinking that if I can just get myself good enough for God, I'll finally feel loved by God. That if I can just fix myself, I'll be fixed. Which, if you've never walked with God, it's the, a total other way around. You have to come to God broken so he can put you back together. You can't get good enough for God. God is the only one who makes you good. And so I ended up getting in this cycle of living in shame, trying to come back to God, living in shame, trying to come back to God, trying to do things that he had told me to do, trying to do what I knew was right, but I couldn't. 
I ended up going to a Christian recovery program. Uh, it's called Teen Challenge. Um, if any of you know anybody struggling with addiction, wonderful program. Talk to me after the service. Um, I went in. I was still mad at God, still angry, um, especially at this point because I felt that I was at the end of my rope. Earlier that year, I had a friend of mine take his own life, and that was really difficult for me. And I started just struggling with questioning God. God, if you're a loving God, how could you let this happen to me? How could you let this person die? How could you let them take their own life far before they were ever supposed to die? And I remember God so clearly. Because I was asking him, like, why did you abandon me? And I remember his answer. It's one of the few times I've actually felt like I heard God speak. He said, Joshua, I cannot answer that question where you're at right now. If you don't understand my love for you, you'll never grow from this. And that response kind of bothered me. Because God took the effort to respond but didn't answer my question. <laughs> it made me a little frustrated, not going to lie. I, I may have had some choice words for God. Um, <laughs> No, but I made a challenge to God. I said, God, if you truly love me, I need to see it. I don't want anything fake. I've had enough of fake. I've been living fake for as long as I can remember. I want you. If you can change me, I'll live for you forever. I don't care. If you do love me, I need to see it. Because if I don't see it, I'm not going to be able to live for you. And what God started to show me is the closer I got to God, the more I sought him, the more I started to see change in myself when I wasn't even trying to change myself. All I was doing is trying to know him. And slowly but surely, and this was a process of me seeking God to where he started to change who I thought I was, started to change my identity, started to change everything about me. I remember it very clearly where it all kind of came together. It's kind of funny. Um, at Teen Challenge, um, I was doing a job that I was not being paid for. Um, and it was a construction job in the middle of July. Um, <laughs> we were about to throw shingles on a roof, and I was not super enthused about it. Um, but I remember, if you're looking at my life at that time, every metric that you could measure my life at, other than maybe a couple of things, was not going great. It was not going well. But I remember in this moment, and it was kind of weird, because I remember sitting there, I feel like God opened my eyes and gave me clarity for just a second that I could get new perspective. I remember sitting there and thinking, if I feel loved now, if I feel joy now, I can feel it anywhere. When everything in my life is falling apart, I don't need somebody to tell me I'm loved. I don't need anybody to encourage me because God's already done that for me. Amen. And what God started to do in my life is started to show me how much he loved me, started to show me that I was a son. Shortly after that, right before I left Teen Challenge, God finally answered my question. I remember it so clearly. God said to me, Joshua, I never abandoned with you. I was with you through it all. I know every single tear you cried. I was there and I felt your pain. I bore your pain. You have never been abandoned by me. I'm a good father and I don't abandon my children. Amen. And what God started to do in me is reveal to me that I'm a son. In Romans chapter 8, it says that by his spirit testifies our spirit that we're indeed children of God. What that means is the Holy Spirit, that one of the signs of having the Spirit of God inside of you is you knowing that you're a son or daughter, knowing that you are a child of God, knowing that you're loved by God. It says by that Spirit you receive adoption into the family of God. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. We're going to be reading a lot out of 1 John, just so you know. So if you have your Bible, you might as well open up to 1 John because we're going to be staying there. Um, <laughs> this verse is 1 John chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See how great a, a love the Father has bestowed on us, that we would be called the children of God, and such we are. For this reason, the world does not know us, because they don't know him. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has, appeared to us, it has not appeared to us yet, as we will be. 
We know that when he appears, we will be like him because we see him just as he is. And everyone who has this hope fixed on him purifies himself just as he is pure. God's desire for us is to know that we're his children. You see, in the life of Jesus, every time he prayed, every time he taught, every time he talked to other people about God, he would reference God as Father. He didn't, I think it's over 130 times throughout the gospel, Jesus refers to God as Father. There's something there. If we don't start with the understanding that God is our Father, we'll never be able to live who God's called us to live. In my life, when I started to see that he was my Father, my life started to change. I started to see that I was walking better. Even my prayers changed. I went from praying, God, please fix me because I'm a screw up and I need your help to God, I thank you for what you're doing. God, I thank you for what you've done on the cross. God, I thank you that you're making me new and whole. And when he started to change my perspective on how I saw myself, my life started to change. When my perspective changed on him, I could see him clearly and I realized I was so deceived with where I was living. God did not hate me. He didn't. He loves me more than I could ever know, more than I could ever fathom. And when you get a hold of that, there's nothing that can take that from you. Can we go to the next verse? This is 1 John chapter 4, verses 15 through 19. Or, yeah. Whoever confesses that Jesus is the Son of God, God abides in him, and he in God. We have come to know and have believed the love which God has for us. God is love, and the one who abides in love abides in God, and God in him. By this love is perfected within us, so that we may have confidence in the day of judgment. Because as he is, so also are we in this world. Therefore, there is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out all fear. Because fear involves punishment, and the one who fears is not perfected in love. We love because he first loved us. If we don't get our identity from what Christ did on the cross, and we get it from what we did, we'll never live anything other than that. I noticed two main things in this verse. It says, if we abide in his love, God abides in us, and we are perfected in his love. Understanding God's love requires proximity to God. If you don't get close to God, if you don't try to seek him, you're not going to feel loved by him. If you don't recognize your love by him, you're not going to feel it. If I'm married to a woman, and I don't spend time with her, don't acknowledge that she exists, I'm probably not going to feel loved by her. That's with any relationship. But when you get close to God, notice how it doesn't say you work hard enough and his love is perfected in you. It doesn't say that you do enough in ministry and his love is perfected in you. No, it says you abide in his love. And that just means to stay in relationship with him. That just means to walk with him. Read what he's said. Listen to him for yourself. And his Holy Spirit will guide you and teach you and show you that you're loved. And when we become perfected in his love, we can be confident. There's no fear, there's no shame, there's no condemnation that we have to live in anymore. When we understand his love, it gives us the strength to walk this out. So you see, Jesus also says that if the eye is the lamp of the body and there is light, how great is that light? And if the eye is the lamp of the body and there is darkness in it, how great is that darkness? What he's talking about there is not our physical eyes, that if you're in a dark room, it gets really dark. That's not what he's saying. But he's talking about your perspective, your worldview, how you see things. Because if you can align how you see God with the perspective of heaven, the only out produces light. God itself says that he is the father of lights. It says that he is light, and we're supposed to walk in light because he is in the light. When we get a hold of that, we get a hold of his love for us, there's nothing that can take it away from us. It produces good fruit within us. Not only that we know that we're loved, but we can love other people. He also says that a bad tree cannot produce good fruit, and a good tree cannot produce bad fruit. And a lot of people will read this and feel condemned by it when God's trying to encourage you about something. Because if it was just, oh, we have bad fruit in our lives, that's everybody. 
And if that's the case, we're all bad trees and we need a lot of prayer and need to figure this out. But what he's talking about is what God plants in you or what you let to be planted in your life bears fruit. If I let God's love be planted in my life, it produces a harvest of love. It produces fruit in my life to where I'm able to be secure in myself. But if I allow the lies of this world, the lies of the enemy to be planted in my life, they produce fruit as well. So if I allow the fruit to say, I am unrighteous, I'm unworthy, I am not enough, I'm gonna live all of those things. And it's gonna bear fruit. When I live in the identity that I am ashamed, I am going to stay there and it's gonna produce fruit with inside of me. But when I believe correctly about what it says about God, so much life is brought there. And through that, it allows you to walk without fear, without condemnation, without shame, because it says that his love casts out all fear. When we're perfected in it, we don't have to live in it anymore. We don't have to live for ourselves. We don't have to live as we once were. And it says that we love because he first loved us. Can we go to the next slide? Okay. If we miss becoming what God has called us to be, if we miss loving others how God has told us to, we're missing the point. 1 Corinthians 13 says, if I speak with the tongue of men or angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give all my possessions to the poor and get it over my body to hardship that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. You see, church, if Christ died for us, we might as well live to the fullness of what he's called us to. He's called us to live for so much more than ourselves. When you realize that everything that you thought you were is what he's calling you to die to, and he has so much more for you in store than you could ever hope or imagine for, and that your calling isn't necessarily what you think it is, that it's to be loved to the people around you, to become love and make his name and his love known on the earth, it allows you to walk it out. When you get that perspective of his love, you're able to love other people. It transforms you from the inside out to be perfected in love, to love other people how they should. Jesus also says, love not father, mother, sons, daughters, the whole gambit, not even your own life. If you love your life, you'll surely lose it. But if you lose your life for my sake, you'll surely find it. When you give up those things, and those are hard things to give up. It's hard to give up everything. But when you give those to God, you realize that God actually gives you the ability to love them even more than you once did and to love them rightly. Not in the love of this world, not something that's common, but a love that's not dependent on them, that the love that's not dependent on circumstances, a love that's not dependent on anybody else but God. God's staying consistent. His love never changes, never fails. It's always going to be the same. And when we realize it doesn't give us an excuse not to love other people, it allows us to walk it out when we realize that. When we understand his love, it allows us to put him first. Kind of like what PM was talking about. When you have God first and let him be everything to you, God restores it to what it's supposed to be. God has a calling on each one of our lives. And through our lives, we've messed it up just through sin, everything else. God had an original plan for us. And God's desire is to bring you back into that. Bring you back into being a son. But God's desire for each one of our lives is to love him and to love other people. That's it. There's no higher calling. There's no ministry. there's There's nothing other than that. If it doesn't start with loving God, if it doesn't start with seeing God appropriately, seeing God how he sees, how he is and how he sees you, we're not able to walk that out.
when you get a hold that nothing can ever separate you from the love of God, nothing will ever separate you from the love of God. Because it says, I think it's in Romans chapter 8, it says, For I am surely convinced that neither heights nor depths, nor angels nor demons, nor rulers or principalities, nor life nor death itself can ever separate us from the love of God. When you get a hold of that, and that takes hold of you, you are able to not only be loved, but you're able to work in love the way that God has called you to. God has called you for a purpose. God didn't just put you on this earth so you can find all things out and you can just struggle your way through it. No, God put you on this earth for a plan and a reason, and that is to make his love and his glory known to the people around you. He has made you so that your light could shine among men, that your love would not only transform yourself, but it would transform the other people around you. Jesus also said that it says, you are my disciples, and people will know you as my disciples for your love for one another. And I know that's difficult. Like, I have a hard time with even just coworkers or family or staying in love with people and not getting frustrated. But through my example of choosing to love people, there is no greater joy, there is no greater peace, there is no greater sense of purpose that you can have in this life. If we become anything in this life, it doesn't matter if you're a pastor, it doesn't matter if you're called to the workplace, it doesn't matter what your calling is, if we become anything, let it become like him, let it become like love so that we can make a change on this earth. Can we go to the next slide? 1 John 2, 5 through 6. But whoever keeps his word, in him the love of God has truly been perfected. By this we know we are in him. The one who abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked. Do you know what encourages me most about that verse? Is when his love is perfected in him, it says that he gives us the ability to walk as Christ walked on the earth. That is crazy to me. That when his love is perfected in me, that I can share with other people his perfect love. With no strings attached, nothing holding me down. It's not based on the circumstances of this world. It's based on him. If we don't walk this out, we're missing so much that God has for us. (laughs) <laughs> because his love transforms who you see yourself as. His love transforms how you see the other people around you as. When I started to see God's love in my life, it started to change how I saw other people. It started to bring me in alignment with what he had called me to do. I started to see people struggle, and it made me just miserable because God has put a calling on my life, and his love has revealed that to me. His love started to give me a tender heart to other people, started to change my desires, started to change how I walk. Am I perfect at this? Am I have a full understanding of his love? No, no one does. But what I can tell you is if you don't feel loved by God, the only solution is to get close. I know that's difficult. When I was not in my relationship with God, it was a hard process for me because I had to trust a God that I didn't know loved me. But when I understood how much he loved me, that he didn't just die for me because I was a sinner, but he died to bring me into a relationship with the Father, to have a relationship with me, so that I could be made a son, it made me a son in my heart. God's love is not the love of this world. And to see him as father, a lot of people try to put their father, their earthly father, as God, how they see him as father. God wants to separate them entirely from each other. It doesn't matter if you have a good father or a bad father, it doesn't matter. God is the perfect father. And through his love, he redefines what father means to you. Because it's not by the world's definition of love. Father doesn't. Because his love is unconditional. His love goes beyond anything that we can fathom. And 
And when we understand that, we're able to walk out what God has for our lives. When we understand what Christ paid for, we begin to realize that we have value through him. It's in Colossians 1, it says that God has made us righteous, whole, and above reproach. That's his desire with us. When we walk in relationship with God, he begins to restore who we are. Because God paid for all of our pain, all of our shame, all of our sickness, all of our condemnation on the cross. He paid for all of it. It's not something that you have to work for. It's not something that you have to earn enough. No, he's already paid for it. If I have pneumonia, and I think I'm going to get better before I see the doctor, that is a terrible idea. Jesus himself said, who did I come for, the healthy or for the sick? God is not afraid of your mess. God will step down in it. God will love you, and he'll show you his love. And by his love, we're able to love other people how he's called us to. The love of God is the only thing that we have that can lead us to true transformation. That can lead us into becoming who he's called us to be. It restores our identity and it makes us new. And so if you're here today and you don't feel the love of God, I'm just gonna pray for everybody really quickly. Um, If you feel the love of God, that is wonderful. That is a beautiful thing to be in a relationship with the Father. And I ask that he shows you even more of his love. So if you're here in the room, if you wouldn't mind praying with me. Dear Heavenly Father, We thank you for who you are. We thank you for what you've done, Father God. Oh, Jesus. God, I thank you that you didn't make mistakes in this room, Father God. Father God, but you made children. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would speak to us and show us who you are and to show us that we're your children, Father God. Father God, I thank you that we don't have to work for it. It's not about us earning it, Father God, that we've been saved alone by your grace, God. And it's our choice whether we choose it. Father God, we ask that we would draw closer to you, that you would reveal your love to us in a new way, Father God. Father God, I thank you that you've not called us to be broken. God, that you've not abandoned us, Father God. Father God, that you were there, Father, for all of us. That you've seen every tear that you know our pain, but God, you called us to be so much more than that. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen, amen. amen. I think I was a little short there, but (laughs) with that, I think, yeah. (laughs) I got it. Am I back on? Amen and amen and amen. Did I not tell you? <laughs> Isn't it awesome when somebody gets a truth in their heart and lives it out and then shares from that? Because this young man, he's studied and he's done his work and he's got all the, the study and the book work and all of that, but he has applied what he has learned. And as we've walked alongside of him, I've watched him do that and watched him struggle with those things. And, and what he says He will do for him, he has done for me, and he will do for all of you. Amen? Amen. So let this word change you this week. Amen? Amen. Soak in the love of God. Let it transform you. I asked him, when we asked him to preach, he's like, what's your legacy? What are you leaving us with? And he went and prayed, and this is what he came with. Can I not say what? You couldn't have come up with a better message. So thank you. And thank you for being willing to come up and do that. Amen? I love to see God work. Amen?
So can we take that? Can we let that just percolate in our life? Can we soak in the love of God this week? Can you meditate? I, I'm just going to encourage you, go back and listen to this message. Like, I think it's Ruby that told me that she's like, sometimes if something really hits her, she goes and she listens to it every single day until it like soaks. Can I just tell you, this is a word we need to soak in. There was a lot of nuggets that he put out. <laughs> so chew, okay? <laughs> chew on those nuggets that he put out there. Amen? Yeah. Um, we will go to lunch today. There will be snacks in the back. There will be um, we, the cake. We've got tiramisu. We've got a chocolate cake. We've got some stuff. So make sure that you greet people. But can I pray for y'all? I know Josh did, but can I pray? Lord, we just thank you. We thank you that you are a good, good father. We thank you about how much you love us. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that, that you transform lives. Lord, I thank you that you transformed, Ethan, uh, not Ethan, Josh. Lord, that you trans yeah, transformed Ethan too, but <laughs> you transformed Josh. Lord, that you work out the truths that, that, that come to our hearts. And Lord, I just ask, I just ask, Lord, that, that those, those seeds that came from you today, may they be planted in good soil and may they bring forth fruit in our life. May your word bring forth fruit in our lives today. We thank you, Lord. Lord, we want to be a church that loves you and that loves others and that knows your love. So, Lord, we just pray for every single person here. And may I just say, if there's anybody here that has not yet accepted this Jesus that he's been talking about, can you all just wave your hand at me? Or if you're online, you can drop us a chat. Come talk to us. We would love to speak with you and help you through that. We are going to be ending. And so if there is anybody that needs prayer for anything, Come here and be prayed for. I'll be here. Pastor Tony, Pastor May, my mom, and Josh will be here to pray. Amen? So uh, be blessed. Walk in the love of the Lord and greet somebody. Amen? Love on people. Amen? Amen? Amen. Thank you, Josh.